Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri, and is the world's first single barrel only liquor store. This business is owned and operated by Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution list. That way you'll know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and what barrel picks they have in the works. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers a fully customizable carrying case that allows you to take your favorite distilled spirits or cocktail ingredients with you. Whether you're looking for yourself, a customized gift, or logo items for your business or event, The Bar to Go can help. Check them out at thebartogo.com. Use the number two when you type out The Bar to Go. Did you know Neely Family Distillery now ships its popular distilled spirits directly to you? To order, simply call 859-394-3258. Tell them the ABV Network sent you. And now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss Heaven Hill's latest latest heritage collection release, their 20-year-old corn whiskey. My name is McNeil. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Kathy Cool and Phil Collin. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey, everyone. Hey. hey. Oh, hey. Oh, so yes, we're going to have a fun show today. We're going to be talking about some 20-year-old corn whiskey that uh, is coming out from Heaven Hill. We've heard Bernie Lovers talk about this for years. For years, he said that there is some really old corn whiskey there. And uh, yeah, it'll be fun to, to talk about our thoughts on that. But we'll get to that after the break. For right now, Kathy said there's something she wanted to talk about. What is that, Kathy? So, and I'm really glad Phil's on the show tonight because there is chat in the ABV Network Crew Club about having a bourbon burn group yes yes and yes this has always interested me but the people that are talking about going are like serious cyclers and it'll just be like me on my little tricycle back there yeah, it has <laughs> nothing to do though yeah yeah so, it's not it's not a race it's not you have to ride together if you're on a team you it's everything's independent right phil kathy That's you don't true. even have yeah. to ride you can you get don't. a rider <laughs> buy you a non-rider they don't buy you can pay them for it you can get added to a writer's ticket as a non-writer so i think i'm going to sign on to james's and i'm just going to pay him the 300 dollars or whatever it is to be a non-writer but i would like to ride but the accommodations have me a little <laughs> i want to write but the accommodations like do i have to sleep in a tent kathy kathy one concern at a time let's start from the top so <laughs> oh, burn, burn. <laughs> I will it, room with you because I'm not a tent girl either. We'll find a hotel. Let's, let's take a step back. The bourbon I say the hotel. Yeah, I think we're going into our, our six year, three day bike ride and whiskey festival in, in Lexington, Kentucky. I worked with them full time for a while. I still help out in a number of ways. I think the world of the organizers in the event, they are not fools. So they have a casual ride, which is speak for the shortest ride you can possibly imagine. It's flat. It's easy. It's usually about 25 miles. And then they've got the mega century, which is like 106 miles over the hilliest terrain in Frankfurt and, and Woodford County and all those areas. So for all three days, if you do three days, you could ride no more than like 50 miles. And if you cut it short and go back to base camp, no one's any the wiser. Because like Steve said, it's not a race. It's, it's right. not a race. It's not like, oh, wait a minute. I saw her double back. No, it's not. You just do what you want. Yeah. And the accommodations, we make a big deal about the camping because it's free and it's included in your ticket. And it's a hoot and it's a holler. But if you're like me and your days in a tent are a little behind, I, I won't lie. I, I, I take the RV option every year I work to burn. So you can uh, bring your RV to the RV park, which is attached to the campground, where there's a lot of hotels. And we even have shuttles through Central Kentucky tours. Oh, shuttles. I'm sold on the shuttle because I was like, shuttles. I, 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 I said I the magic word. I hotel, yeah. but the how shuttle. do I get back to the hotel? Yeah, I got shuttles. Right. I got shuttles. Perfect. Oh, yeah. So yeah. uh, don't trust me. Not not as many people. We love talking about the people who camp, but a whole lot of people do hotels or local stays at Airbnbs or bring their trailers. And last but not least, we you know we do the the three day ticket. We do a two day ticket, and then like McNew said, you can do a non rider ticket, which allows you for all the fun in the bourbon stuff with none of the riding. And in the years I've been doing this, some of the most fun, energetic, most memorable people have been the oh. non rider guests of the riders. So and that's yeah, a there you go. Too. There you go. There was one guy, and Steve's seen this guy. And he, he, he was a big Alabama fan. He set up with some flags 
he sat in a lawn chair and he just watched people ride out for like two and a half hours. I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what the interest was, but he just sat and kind of waved as people were riding out and sipped his coffee. That's basically my job there. Right. But you're, you're getting paid. And then you say clever things and ask where they're from. He was just watching a parade. Yeah. 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 I I I I hope that assuages some of your concerns and fears. The burn is a great, and we just opened a registration last week and I'm thrilled to be assisting again with some great onsite VIP experiences and, and bourbon stuff. And it's so hard for me because I want to tell the world about it, but it's only for people who have a ticket to the event. So I, it's some of the best stuff we do all year. It's great. So it looks like a blast and I feel like I got roped into it because James such suits got really involved in it. And he was like, McNeil, you got to come. And I'm like, I don't ride bikes. Like even when I was a child, that was not my jam. Well, I was like, no, my brother would ride believe. it. I would run along beside him. I was like, I am not riding a bike. I was like, this looks fun though. I'm in for the burp and stuff. So I'm, you can definitely get a non-rider ticket if you get a rider to hook you up. <laughs> I've learned, you know, we always have our bourbon controversies that other people and other passions and hobbies thinks are silly. I've learned of a few bike controversies that people think yes. are silly. So one common question that the burn gets asked is, can I ride an electric bike? Can I ride anything? And the motto is, if you can pedal it, you can bring it, which makes sense to me. But apparently in some circles, it's frowned upon. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. there, there's, there's probably purists, like, you know, there's like old there are. Purists, that's that's like, a fun yeah, conversation. There's, there's, there, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Is it fun though, Steve? I, for me, because I'm not involved in it at all. Oh, I can't. Right. I, I don't ride a bike, yeah. so I just get to sit on the sidelines and, and wind them up a little bit. So, and then some people are going to be elliptigos, which are yeah. those ones that look like you're on a piece of exercise equipment and you're like a yeah, gazelle. There's some of that that goes yeah, on. A bit there's somewhere they're just you're the recumbent where they're just totally laying down, just yeah, uh, like, uh, ready to take a nap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stop along the side and just take a nap. I think I think the four of us should get a bicycle built for four. A and ride for that for 100 we're miles. not going to do what well. Kathy, you're leading mm. this thing. The rest Let's get of one of those tiki bars. Right. Let's go all out. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Bicycle tiki so, bars. Take yeah. the pedal bars. You can yeah. pedal it. Can we get a right. pedal? Right. We'll just bar? do that. We'll do that. That'll be our. Can you imagine taking that thing 20 miles? Can you imagine taking that on the roads 20 miles? Yeah. I don't think it goes up hills, guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we yeah. should definitely go downhill real quick. I'm going to email the burn team and tell them we're bringing uh, one of the pedal we're bars. We're bringing to the burn. a cheeky yeah. pedal bars. <laughs> Bill, do you know the dates off the top of your head? That was I do. Or... September 29th to October 1st this yeah. fall at the Kentucky Horse Park Campground in Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, there you go. There you go. On that note, let's talk to Phil about uh, uh, what's the restaurant you were going to talk about? Bob Evans. You got a Bob Evans story before we go to a drink. What do you? What, what's your Bob Evans story? I love Bob Evans and it's a great time. And my family and my wife and my in-laws, they all love Bob Evans. But many years ago, uh, my mother-in-law was looking over her credit card bill. And, you know, sometimes restaurant codes are kind of jumbled and hard to read. Yep. And there was one on there and it said, uh, Bobby Vans. And she couldn't (laughs) figure out what Bobby Vans was. And she said, Jim, what's what's Bobby Vans? When did we spend $44 at Bobby Vans? And she goes, I have no idea what Bobby Vans. I'm going to call the credit card company. I think this is. And my father-in-law took one and goes, that says Bob Evans. <laughs> all together. So she thought it was Bobby Van. So in our Bobby family, Vans. to this oh. day, we still call Bob Evans Bobby that's, Van. That's actually pretty good. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Like On it. that note, we drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with Kathy Cool. She looks ready to go. Kathy, yeah, you... so I was in the shop today. Yeah. Oh, and there you go. talking about corn whiskey. I picked up a 100% Mexican corn whiskey. Ooh. Sampled it out in the shop. Yeah. Yep. I don't think the cork is going to do much, but here we go. Okay. That's pretty good oh, considering you just opened it today. I mean, yeah. 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 That's some good stuff, by the way. So, yeah, we, we, uh, we went, but Jim and I have been wanting to try, but we were only able to get two bottles. You can't really open up one if you own a shop, if you've got two oh. bottles. That doesn't work that way. Uh, so we were hoping a customer would, and one guy came in and bought it. We were like, oh, man, I bet you that's interesting. And I, oh, man, that'd be fun to try. And the guy was like, yep. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then Kathy came in today and bought one for us and then let us try it. So that was good. Hey, we got to, good we got to taste it. So, it's a good yeah. day. Yeah. All right, Phil, what do you got, man? Uh, I recently happened my way into some uh, Michigan whiskey bottles, and this is from uh, Grass Widow is the name of the bottle. Okay. Spirit oh, of Detroit, and it's a uh, bourbon that's finished in uh, Madeira. Okay. Well, yeah, well, not too well, shabby. One well, of the better ones. Oh, well, not as good as Kathy. Kathy has the lead. It's your opinion. But, McDo, you're next. So I went with my favorite Heaven Hill product, Larceny. <laughs> okay. Never heard of it. Oh, Ooh. that's the lead. That's the there lead. There it is. It's going to be tough to beat. I don't know that I anticipate much here. I got Yellowstone, just the standard Yellowstone, and it is uh, uh, more than halfway gone. So let's see here. 
Oh, no, no, no. It was explosive. It was explosive. I, I think I won. If you're Tim Swyatt. It was- yeah. <laughs> if I, I wouldn't be Tim Swyatt there. Yeah. No, no. Uh, McNew wins. Cheers. Well done. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. All right. We'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to be talking about this new corn whiskey from Heaven Hill. We'll do that in just a few. Let's talk about the people who make these shows happen. First up is the ABV Barrel Shop. It is the most unique shopping experience in the world of bourbon as the ABV Barrel Shop only sells single barrels, owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott select. With over 100 distilleries on board to sell us barrels, we are home to the most unique and diverse barrel pick selections in the bourbon world. By signing up for our email, you will always know what we have in stock. In addition to the single barrels, we'll have a gift shop featuring ABV Barrel Shop as well as ABV Network merchandise. We are partnering with vendors like Art Eatables and Old Man Bay Signs to bring you unique items you can't find anywhere else. We will also have a 24C classroom where we are offering educational and fun classes like Breakfast and Bourbon, a series where we pair donuts and bourbon, customer barrel picks, and opportunities to learn from master distillers and other bourbon dignitaries. Best of all, we feature a tasting bar where you can try before you buy. All of this is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. If you are in the St. Louis area, please stop by to say hi. If you're traveling in from outside the area, please take advantage of our hotel rates with the Drury Inn and Pear Tree Inn less than a mile from our shop. This can be done via the links in our Visit St. Louis section on our website. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to plan your trip. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. Hi, this is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network. We're sponsored by the Staven Thief Society. This is where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge a bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification program available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Okay, let's talk about the Neely Family Distillery. In 2018, I met Royce Neely at an industry event. He started appearing on our shows and we became friends during my frequent trips to Kentucky. Today, he is amongst the leaders of young distillers leaving their mark on the bourbon industry. A visit to Neely Family Distillery yields insight on their unique family history, why their products are special, and gives you the opportunity to taste their whiskey, moonshine, and creams. Check them out at neelyfamilydistillery.com or visit them in Sparta, Kentucky. Hi, this is Mr. Bill. You're listening to Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today, we're talking about Heaven Hill's 20-year-old corn whiskey. Yes, we are. So, again, I talked about it at the top of the show, the fact that Bernie Lubbers for years has been saying there's there's this great corn whiskey at Heaven Hill. We finally get to uh, get it. It's finally out there. It is part of Heaven Hill's Heritage Collection, which uh, is an occasional release, just one-offs. It's not anything that will come out every year. You're not going to be able to buy this every year now. But um, so it's out there now. And uh, what are your guys' thoughts on this one? What do you think about a 20-year-old corn whiskey from Heaven Hill? I have two thoughts, and they're yes. contradictory. Uh, I think it's absurd, and I love it at the same time. Like <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm the same boat. Those yeah. madmen. Uh, yeah. And I also think that you know Heaven Hill, I, I believe, is like the second largest uh, barrel holder in Kentucky with the amount of barrels they have in storage yep. behind Beam. Yeah. So God knows what else they have tucked oh, away. Yeah. yeah. Biding it's, time. It's an amusement park. Waiting. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I think it's crazy and wonderful at the same time. Yeah. So I think I think the bottle's beautiful. Like there's it's an absolute package. I would be like, I want to buy that. But at three hundred dollars, I'm like, I don't want to buy that. That's where it gets dicey. Yeah. So, so you what know, price do you think it should be? Like fifth, I would be happy at like seventy dollars. Yeah. But it's I know so that hard because needs, it's corn. You know, that doesn't work out whiskey. for the age. Right. But for a corn whiskey, I'm not paying over seventy dollars. Right. I, I know agree. that's the that's the the problem. That's where you, you know, they have at. a very good corn whiskey that uh, sells for like fifteen bucks, and you can be like, "Well, this is twenty years old." Versus, I, we don't know how the old it is. We know it's at least four years old. It's a bottled and bond, but 
you know, is it five times better? Well, you know, five times better, that that's only 75 bucks. Uh, so is it a uh, 10 times better? Uh, you know, we, we've got to start getting multiples that get pretty high and, when it's a, and, uh, it's 20 times higher than, uh, than well, regular. Steve, I think the problem is, and I, you, yeah. you touched on it when introducing the bottle, it's got nothing to do with the fact it's a uh, rare corn whiskey. It's got nothing to do with the fact it's 20 year age. It's part of that heritage collection. It's a limited yeah. one-off. And yep. it bears the Heaven Hill name. So that's what they're counting on that $300 yeah. price tag to be worth it. Here's the thing. They're not wanting to sell it to whiskey drinkers. They're wanting to sell it to whiskey collectors. That's Stanley not, Touche, yeah. my friend. No, Stanley Touche. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah. My my deal on this one is uh, very interested. Would love to try it. Don't want to buy it. I, I If someone called me and said, hey, good news. I've got a bottle of this, even for the $300. I, I'm not talking secondary price or anything like that. I think I got a pass on a three hundred dollar corn whiskey. I, I I would love to try it. I'd love to taste it, but I just can't. I can't pull the trigger on three hundred dollar corn whiskey. Me too. Yeah. There's there's a gentleman who shares my co working space with me in downtown Louisville. A wonderful place called Story. Big bourbon guy. Super animated about everything. He likes to spend a lot on a lot of different bottles, and he gets so excited about so many things. And often when he tells me about a bottle and how much he paid. And I think it's a lot of money for something I wouldn't. I have to put on my excited, that's great for you face where I go, oh man, it was really wonderful. And this yeah. would be one of those things where if he goes, I went down to Heaven Hill, I stopped in the gift shop, I only had to wait in line 45 minutes and for 300 bucks, this was mine. And if he told me that, I have to be like, oh man, I'm so happy <laughs> for you. <laughs> you know, and that's that's good for some people. It's not good for us. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. it's good for you, man. Like, exactly. That's how I feel. Friend. And that's how it should yeah. be with bourbon, right? If you, right. I mean, from yeah. leaving all the secondary stuff aside, if you see it on retail and that's the price you're asking and that's what you want to pay, good cheers to you, my friend. Yes. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. So on that note, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Phil, we're going to start with you. Where can people find you? Excellent. One-stop shopping for all your social media Phil needs. I'm at Derby <laughs> City Phil on Instagram and Twitter. Kathy. You can find me on Instagram at KK Cask Strength. All right. McNeil. I am on Instagram at McNeil ABV. For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got a company website, that thing's abvnetwork.com. Check it out. Everything that we do is out there. Previous shows, blogs, so much more, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see us, like Kathy Cool did today. She stopped by randomly at the ABV Barrel Shop. Uh, we do keep uh, uh, track of our top 10 customers. Uh, Kathy, it looks like she's going to break into it the next hey. time we do the rankings. Oh, uh, she's she was right on the edge this past time. I think she's there. So uh, it has nothing to do with the amount you spend or anything like that it's the joy that you give us while you're there and how much time you spend so someone who's there a lot and makes us happy oh they go high up in the ranking so especially yeah. if you open a bottle and share it with everyone yeah that was big that yeah, was a big moment for her you. bottle yeah, i think that's yeah. worth some rates all right make do anything else to say before we get out of here i would like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments that helps new people find the show which is very important to us and if you like what we're doing we ask you please visit our patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV network. Great job today, gang. Fardians will have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye, everyone. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Before we finish the show, let's talk about some great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro has a full line of products to help the home distiller. Whether you want to experiment on the stove in your kitchen or you're looking for a bigger setup in your backyard, owner Russell Creed and his team can help. They have multiple still offerings, accessories, and even grain from their partners at Goldstone Mill to assist you in making whiskey on par with your favorite distillery. They can also help you with some fabricated parts you probably can't make yourself if you are attempting a DIY still project. Learn more or order your still or parts at moonshinestillpro.com. Last but not least is the ABV Barrel Shop. While we don't get to play in the allocated bourbon game because we aren't selling the other products you have to do to get those, we do have access via our friendships in the bourbon industry to some really cool stuff. Have you ever seen your favorite craft distiller selling some really cool limited offerings only in their gift shop? I'm talking things like the Hazmat offering Distillery 291 did for their 10th anniversary or Neely Family Distillery's Papaw's Birthday Barrel. They don't have enough of it to send it out to distributors, so they only sell it via their gift shop. Well, companies like Distillery 291 and Neely Family Distillery have agreed to sell us two or three cases of these offerings moving forward, meaning our store will have the access to some of the rarest whiskeys in the world. Way more difficult to come by than the allocated bourbon offerings with a national release. Yes, they will be extremely tough to come by, 
But if you're a customer of our store, you'll have a chance to get them. Get signed up for our email or text list over at abvbarrelshop.com so you don't miss out. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.